Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 58 of Bonus Features with Alex and Robert. I'm Robert. And I'm Alex. And my impression of James Brown sounds more like Mark Hamill's Joker doing an impression of James Brown. (laughs) I tried. That's okay. Okay. Well, I guess we'll move on. It's time to talk about movies and stuff. But before we do, our pointless two-minute interlude of sports. That isn't always two minutes. So, Hawk's been eating it. The Bears been eating it. But the Bulls have also been... Uh, they beat the Knicks the other day. They did. Right? And then they beat... Who, what team is Derrick Rose on now? Pistons. Yes. I saw that game did and... Did he even we, play? Yeah. Derrick? He played the whole game. Oh, I didn't even see it. Yeah. I, I watched MV, only a little. MVP chance and all that shit. Okay. But we, we beat him pretty handily. Kobe White is lighting shit up. Yeah. And uh, what's his name? Uh, Gafford or Gifford? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, wow. Really know the team this year. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. Re- this is, I mean, usually I know at least a few players this Markin year. Markin and Levine. Markin and Levine, Denzel Washington, but that kind of doesn't count because I only know him from Michigan State. Denzel Valentine? Whatever the fuck. <laughs> He's the Denzel Washington. Jesus Christ. You know, I hope if, if Denzel Washington's character from He Got Game was playing on our <laughs> fucking Bulls team, I'd fucking, we would be... Yeah. Surefire super team, but well, see, I was thinking his name. You know, it's Denzel like Valentine. Denzel Valentine. <laughs> Skeeter Valentine. Yeah. <laughs> he's on our team. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, because he has two funny names, and I was thinking about the two funny names, so it mm-hmm. fucked me up, and yeah. I, I messed up his name. But no, it only Denzel further reinforces Valentine. your point that well, this team is. Yeah, is it's, you're like, who is that? Yeah, is Bobby Portis still on the Jose team? Jose Feliciano. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. No, seriously, what is that guy's name? The, oh, Felicio. Felicio. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I thought you were free. I'm like, the guy who's saying Feliz Navidad? No, that, like, that's what that's I was... That's Jose Feliciano. <laughs> no, that, that I was jokingly saying that, but I seriously <laughs> forgot his real name. <laughs> wow, we're such good Bulls fans. Yeah. Uh, UFC. The baddest man on the planet has been crowned. Mm-hmm. With a, they actually made a, a mock belt, <laughs> which is like the craziest part. <laughs> As if to say, uh, hmm, somebody's trying to fix up a welterweight fight. Yeah, yeah. Which is fine. Mm-hmm. I mean, if that's what it takes is making the current champion feel so disrespected that he feels like he has to beat this person's ass, then that's great. Mm. So it is Jorge Masvidal. Mm. But it was a doctor's stoppage because of cuts. Because Nate, Dia- Nate Diaz has that scar tissue, so he bleeds a lot, but it was too much. Which really sucked, because it was a really good fight. This is two f- like two fights in recent memory I can think of that were stopped way too early. Like the Pettis-Tony uh, Ferguson fight, it was such a good fight, and then Pettis broke his hand. Yeah, yeah, no, it was a... Uh... The dreaded stoppage. Yeah, it sucks because you know if it was a knockout, that'd be one thing, but it it was a good fight for what it was. They want to run it back. Yeah. I wouldn't mind that one more time before they take the challenge or they they take the winner of UFC two forty five, which is coming up. Yeah, that's it, that that it is. Kamaro Usman, Kobe Covington. It's gonna be a good fight. And I'm uh, of course. It better I mean, be. There's no there's no there's no more clear like people's choice than Kamaru Usman. Right. That that's the best part is you literally have a pro wrestling heel mm-hmm. versus Kamaru Usman. Mm-hmm. It almost seems manufactured. Yeah, I mean <laughs> But it's still gonna be cool. Well, but that's what Colby Covington does. He knows that it, he if he talks shit and acts like a jerk, he's gonna get press. Yep, he's gonna be seen. Yeah. Either way, that's going to be a cool fight. Also on that card is uh, Jermaine Durandamine versus Amanda Nunes. Mm-hmm. I don't see this going any way but Amanda's <laughs> way. She's a steamroller, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I guess that's it for sports for me. Is that almost two minutes? Yeah. Uh, no, it's well over. But, oh, uh, well, that's well, about as close un- as we Unless get. you have any pressing matters in competitive rock climbing. Like racing? Yeah. Oh. That's in the Olympics, too. Oh. Yeah. I thought it was, like, competitive, like, they're fighting, (laughs) climbing with each other in in It's actually biathlon rock climbing. They have rifles, and the the first (laughs) one to... It's the first one to draw blood or not die wins. Okay, cool. Yeah. 
I'd like to see the guys who made uh, what was that documentary that they made a, a little bit ago? Oh, I can't remember it, but those people are crazy. Free something. Free uh, solo. Free solo. I'd love to see them make the, make a yeah one about the the firearm climbing people. It's like, oh, I got you. See that bullet was grazed off. You know, I cut it on a rock. He's a cheater. <laughs> oh, okay, that one was real. Let's see the family guy. <laughs> It's like a big scandal. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. He, he blamed it on a cut rock. We all saw the bullet graze him. That wasn't a contusion. Yeah. That had an exit wound. <laughs> <laughs> he won fair and square. Uh, but no, I don't have yeah. any uh, well, any. The, okay, this sport matters. makes no sense. <laughs> and, the, and the rules we've just made up don't make sense. Like, you shoot at them, you probably kill them first. <laughs> Anyway. Do you shoot whilst you're climbing? Like, that's so dangerous. Yeah. Recoil is just going to blow you off the side of the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> just imagine the guy, he he shoots the recoil, like, makes him, like, swing away from the mountain so far, <laughs> and he just, like, slams back into it. <laughs> or not, unless they're just shooting each other with, like, not, like, weapons, but, oh, like, like, but, ner- like nerf okay, guns. Okay, here we go. Here's how this, this sport is safe. They're using potato guns. Yeah. <laughs> That's a little bit safer. I was gonna say either that or like the marshmallow guns or Nerf guns. Like okay, yeah. Garrett, stop! <laughs> trying to climb. <laughs> All right, yeah. It's with Nerf guns. Okay. There's no blood involved, so that's the new rules for biathlon rock climbing. <laughs> okay. What is this show about? Right, movies. That's what we're talking about. Starting with our first story, we have some Batman casting updates. Colin Farrell is in negotiations to play Penguin. Andy Serkis is to is uh, what's the word? Confirmed. That's the word to play Alfred uh, Pennyworth, and John Turturro is going to play Carmen Falcone. Uh, so right off the bat, Colin Farrell is Penguin. Now they say in negotiations, meaning they're circling it, mm-hmm. like it could be soon to be final. I hope not. You know, I know we. I, Can we just call bad casting what it is? I don't. Th- I see. I don't think it's bad. Ex- explain it's, to me how it isn't. It's okay. So there are certain characters in Batman where it's like actually not even Batman. There's certain characters in comics and in literature where it's like hard and fast. Like they have to be this and this. Like short and fat, Penguin. But it, here's the deal with Batman villains: is they're very. They've shown like over the hundred near hundred years we've had. Very malleable, and I've seen not one but two versions of Penguin where he's skinny. So and like one was Gotham, so that was not super concerned about right uh, adaptational accuracy. Exactly, and the other one was a game, but they both had him as skinny. But there were certain identifying elements to him. He either had a monocle or dark yeah, hair yeah. or a suit. If you give me those things to latch on to, like, if he wears, like, a black suit with the spats, shoes, and coattails, or whatever, or monocle, like, you give me something to latch on to. Or if you put him in a fat suit, whatever. I'm, I, for me, it's not the one I'm most crazy about, casting-wise, but on sheer acting ability alone, like, I'm totally fine with him being there. Uh, but I get the hesitation, I totally No, I, I don't, see, I don't really see him as that type of character. I think of... Penguin is kind of an archaic guy mm-hmm. who has, you know, out of date views on things. You know what I've heard. You know, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. So I, I don't know. I feel like Colin Farrell. He's not, you know, he's not Mister Modern. But I don't see him. I don't see him playing that kind of character. That, he can do a British me. accent. No, I know he can do accents. I know he's a good, <clears throat> a good actor. I'm just saying, I don't see him pulling off Oswald Cobblepot. This, mm-hmm. this weird. Old timey gangster guy. You know what someone brought up is that maybe this would have worked a lot better if they had switched casting between Andy Serkis and Colin Farrell. Yeah, which I think again, I don't really care either way. I just like oh, you know what? Involved. I actually a hundred percent agree with because that. he'd basically be playing like he oh wait, hold on again a little bit, but a different version like Cockney well, possibly. Okay. Maybe I no, he's too young to be Alfred though. Colin Farrell? Yeah, they're like the same age, Andy Serkis and Colin Farrell, right? Like Are they? Something? Whatever. They could make him like look old or some shit. And either I, way, I'm okay with it. I'm much crazier about Andy Serkis' Alfred. I think it's fine. Or I, I think it's not even fine. I, I like it a lot. See I the, think he's good. See, that's one of those, not my first choice, but I think it'll work out. Yes. And then 
I mean, John Turturro. This just broke today. I think that's awesome casting. I love the fact he's never he's never really done comic book movies. He hasn't really done a big budget thing since like the Transformers movies, which I'm sure. Well, I'm not sure, but like. Not a lot of people look back on those movies very fondly, like a lot of the people that were involved with them. Yeah, there's a chance it may have scared him away from these forever. It, it's possible. It thought we so we thought it's possible, but he's uh, he's back on the 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 triple A movie train, and I think he's a very solid. Yeah, because casting that, choice, right? Because that that doesn't take like you know uh, tinkering around with the process to make it seem like a good choice. This Colin is, Farrell, you have to fuck. You have to reach a lot to make that seem like it's a good choice for Penguin. I I not, reach I'm, a little bit for Andy Serkis just because he's a little younger. Yeah, a, he is a little bit. But with John Turturro, he, you see it. Okay, he's playing Carmen Falcone. That makes perfect that sense. Works. Just he, he's playing a gangster. Mm-hmm. Like that's something he's that's in his wheelhouse. Colin Farrell, not my first choice, but I again like. If you give me the coattails and you give me some sort of, because for me, what the what the penguin means to me is always that he's the guy that he despises the Waynes, and he has he, like the Cobblepots and the Waynes have always had like a rivalry slash like blood yeah. feud or whatever the fuck. So there's always that, yeah. and he's just like super wrapped up in it. Real and Hatfield and McCoys, kind of of with, Gotham with more teeth, with more teeth and more. Uh, I don't know. Yes, uh, more teeth. Dignity. <laughs> More teeth and more dignity. Yes, and more costumes. Yes, and armor. Right. Um, but then he's also just a racketeer, and a, yeah. a, you know he's got the the iceberg lounge man. He's got his uh, see that part of him I could believe. He's and he's got to be a kind of a socialite. So I get that. You know but what's funny? I don't know, we'll see. You know what's funny? Actually, you mentioned the iceberg lounge. I feel like this whole black the black mask. Don't yeah. You, it just feels like there's Colin some. Will make a great black mask. Yeah. He'd make a fantastic black mask, I think. Number one, that. Number two, I feel like the black mask character is some from Birds of Prey. It seems like he's going to be a weird mishmash of Penguin and black mask. Because originally Penguin was going to be, or was rumored to be one of the villains for Birds, uh, of, Prey. Birds of Prey. And that makes sense. It's like, why black mask has a lounge? What the hell is going on? Yeah, there's... That's been kind of they've been bending because I know like originally he has like a makeup company right like or in one yeah, of yeah Roman Sianis yeah. yeah like he has the Sianis that's how he's, industries or yeah that's like how a, he started yeah it's like a it nothing to do with cosmetics company jazz lounge yeah. singing <laughs> but uh, the other thing that is really interesting as this cast fills out is that um, it's starting to lean even more and more towards like long Halloweeny looking. Because now you got like Carmine Falcone, who's a big oh my God, deal yeah. in Long Halloween, and, and like, that's a detective story. Detective story, which lot of that, villains, right? Lot of villains. Uh, Harvey Dent, which is a role that's probably going to be getting filled here in the next couple of weeks, is another role in Long Halloween, very prominent one. Hold on, do you understand what this means? What's that? A DC movie. Uh, you know how we don't believe them until they start <laughs> happening. This one looks like it's starting to happen. There's n- there's there's names here yeah. and like we have shooting dates. This movie's supposed to start this shooting. This movie in like a is month. actually happening. Oh man, I want set photos. I want to see the goddamn it's, wait, suit. Wait, when is it shooting? Like beginning of next year. Wow, that's so what I January, heard. January, February latest. That'll be interesting. Yep, we will uh, keep an ear to the ground for that. So that'll do it for the Batman casting. Now we move on to. Oh boy, our first look at the trailer for the horror reimagining of the classic 1970s slash 80s show Fantasy Island starring Ricardo Montalban and Hervé Villachez. This is directed by and co-written well, the, the, by... This one does not star either one of them. Oh, we'll, we'll yeah. talk about that in a second. Okay. Uh, Jeff Wadlow, who you may remember as the director of Kick-Ass 2 Ooh. and Truth or Dare... Oh man! And never back down, and you just, cr- and you, cry wolf. Oh my God! You just made me so excited for this movie, <laughs> like Kick Ass too. I thought, oh no! But then you said Truth or Dare. I saw about twenty minutes of that on TV. I was mad at myself for not seeing that in theater. It was hilarious. First of all, look at this cast. If yeah. I just look at this cast on well, paper, you see that was the one thing. First of all, the trailer starts, and you see Lucy Hale. Like, I'm like okay, you, you know what, like. 
don't, you know, I know who you are. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter that you dyed your hair. I recognize you. Yeah. <laughs> You're from those crappy movies. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Lucy, like this cast on paper, Lucy Hale, Michael Pena, Maggie Q, Jimmy O. Yang, Michael Rooker's in this. You're like, what? Is this going to be good? Yeah, I don't like, know. I'm confused. What's going on? <laughs> Where the hell is Tattoo? Oh, I know. That's the, the the only thing I know about Fantasy Island at all. De plain, de plain. What the hell? Why am I seeing this? Yeah. It's a horror reimagining. Okay, well. Well, see, no, so? no one yeah, no one cares about the original show, so I guess you can get away with that here. Because I'm imagining you trying to do that with other sh- uh, shows probably wouldn't work the well, same. Well, they tried to with, uh, what was that one they did on sci-fi? The one with the animals, um... I don't know what you're talking about. The one where, oh God, you, you know the one, the la 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 oh, la. Oh, the la, what la, the, the banana the, splits. Banana splits. Uh, remember they tried to? Did they come out? <laughs> we did a story on that. I thought, right? Yeah, I wanted to see that. I haven't seen it yet. So that's a comp, but that's a like direct to but cable. That, but that's one. That's a cable thing, and that's like that's something even. I don't know which is more esoteric. <laughs> this I, is definitely something else. I want to say Fantasy Island's a little more popular. <clears throat> oh yeah, I, it, and the references and the, uh, I guess the lore surrounding the they're on a show. level. Though. They're on a le- on a similar level because like the, the, sh- the, the song, Deplane, and the, the song the of Banana Splits is pretty popular. Yeah, whatever. The point is, <clears throat> yes, this is another reimagining, and I thought, okay, I'm kind of willing to go with this. But there's something about this trailer. I, I got to be honest with you, Robert. I, it looks pretty bad, but I'll be lying if I say I won't see it. This is what AMC, this is what AMC Stubbs <laughs> list does to you. Stubbs life. Dude, this is what A-list has done to me. No, it's, uh, I, I don't blame you. <laughs> Makes you see shit. It is at the very least, like, morbidly intriguing. And I don't mean right. that, like, ooh, people die. I mean, like, this seems like a really dumb idea. And, yeah. like... Like I, I kind of they the movie kind of spells out exactly where it's going. It's like they get to live out their fantasies, but it's like extreme versions of them, and they're like, "No, I don't want yeah, this." Yeah, careful what you wish for. Yeah, and you're like, I kind of get where this is going. Like this just kind of looks like a not as good version Ex- of us, or like a get yeah. out type concept or whatever. Except the difference between this and other bad movies, like a lot of bad movies this year, it looks like they're trying to take a big swing. Yeah. They 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 look like they're putting effort into this. So if it's bad, it's it looks like it has potential to be really really bad, but a, a good time anyway. Yeah yeah yeah. I mean there's there's like bad dialogue, but then you got Jimmy O Yang, so yeah. maybe it'll be funny. <laughs> and Michael Pena, who's just doesn't matter what he's in, like he's wa- a watchable dude. Yeah no he's he's good pretty much in every role he's in. Yeah so. I don't know what to make of this. Not great things to make of it, but I, I'm not oh, like, I th- deterred. I'm hoping oddly. this is as good as the the 20 minutes I saw of Truth or Dare on TV because I was <laughs> I laughed more at Truth or Dare than I did at any like regular studio comedy in <laughs> forever. Wow. I mean, what what else? Never back down. God, this guy is all the best terrible movies. Cry Wolf. I don't even remember seeing that, but I remember it not being. No, good. I heard it was also not great. <laughs> I mean, this is kind of. It seems out of nowhere, and I'm kind of thinking, where is the interest for this? But then at the same time, I think it doesn't look like it was too horribly expensive to make. No, and Blumhouse seems to be kind of. On the right track with things. And it's got that February 14th weekend locked up. Yeah, that is that is true. So, you know what? I think this movie will be probably not a giant success, but I think it'll probably, you know, at least make its money back. You know what else has got that February 14th date locked down? Oh, what's that? The next story on our docket. Oh, that's right. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a trailer for Sonic... Uh, this is the second trailer, keep in mind. Now, why would we report on a second trailer? Well, it's because they've redesigned Sonic entirely for the whole movie. Because people thought he looked like an ugly Chia Pet alien uh, garbage monster. <laughs> and uh, they changed him to look like 
get ready for this, to make him look more like Sonic. Interesting choice. Uh, so the question is, can you polish a turd? Uh, Robert, what, what's your take on that? The movie... <laughs> look, <laughs> Sonic looks better. But I'll say this much. Sonic looks better, but Sonic doesn't look better. Sonic does like I know Sonic so the movie looks like shit. I know so many people, <laughs> friends of mine, that are like, "Yeah, dude, like they put so much effort into this. Like, I have to reward that effort." It's like, no, you don't. <laughs> what? The people are getting paid. They're not doing it for free. And I know a lot of people are saying, like, "Well, there may have been crunch periods and whatever." It's like, look, man, I you got to vote with your dollar, and yeah. I. I the trailer looks bad. Like, I don't care. Like, Sonic not looking great was a symptom of the root... As I said, the cancer that is at the center infesting, metastasizing from within this movie, which is... It's a bad take. It's bad humor. It's bad storytelling. It's bad... Like, it just... It doesn't look very good at all. And the fact that Sonic looks more accurate to his video game counterpart, I, I don't care. And I, I think that... I don't know, man. Like, if if that's what's doing it for you, then I, I don't know. I wish I was that simple. Well, <laughs> you know, I th- I think you're right on the money, and I think this trailer had a lot of new footage. Yeah. And again, it pointed out the gigantic flaw a lot of these types of movies make. Okay, we got Sonic. He lives in this weird world. Let's bring him to our world where it's less exciting. Why the hell would you do that? Because didn't they? Ha- isn't that what they did with the Masters of the Universe movie in the eighties? Mm. What if He Man was in downtown Manhattan or whatever the hell bullshit? Mm. So, the fact that you change Sonic to look more like himself doesn't change the fact that this movie looks like a pile of crap. It looks like what about this looks interesting story wise? So- Sonic is here. And he has to save the world from Dr. Robotnik because of some, like, generic-ass bullshit. Yeah. I mean, the difference between a movie like this and, say, Wonder Woman, which is a fish-out-of-water fish plot, is like, yeah, she's going from a very interesting place to a seemingly drab place, but there's a fucking war going on in that drab <laughs> exactly. place. Exactly. You get to see her beat the shit out of people. Right. This, it's just like, he's coming to fucking 2020 or 2019 or whatever the fuck, and it's just like... Right. Just cars and, and dogs and shit, and that's it. <laughs> or like another classic feature film, the 1993 <laughs> adaptation of Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> <laughs> the Forest of Arkansas, I think that's where they're from, is an interesting place. But Beverly Hills is also interesting. And like another okay, fish out of like, water Beverly Hills story, yeah. Beverly Hills Ninja, no, but he's th- coming from a very interesting place and going into, yes, our world, but there's crime afoot. Yes. So it's interesting. There's there's crime afoot. There's possible murders afoot. <laughs> there's swinging fish around there's afoot. Swinging swinging fish and uh, palm, palm tree, tree swinging yeah. to the fucking that, Tarzan. See, th- that was the other. Th- that was the other thing is he looks like he's making. No, but this is a serious point about Beverly Hills Ninja. He makes the the environment more interesting by being there. Oh yeah. I feel like with Sonic, he isn't making the environment more interesting. He's just there, and he's just doing Sonic shit against boring backdrops of, like, regular towns. And mm-hmm. the, it, it just it doesn't look like it's adding anything. And so, to, to be clear, yeah. me not wanting to see it, and I'm probably fucking going to see it, let's be honest. Me not wanting to see it is, it's not me wanting to punish the animators. It's not that at all. No. It's that... My seeing it isn't going to get them paid for the overtime work they most definitely put in. It's going to get some fucking studio executive and the actors in this movie paid. Yeah. So I, I, you know, I, I admire the work they did, and they probably put in a shit ton more work than they needed to because let's just be honest here. The only thing it looks like they changed was the Sonic design. Yeah. And chances are if the people who gave you this movie thought that that Sonic design was going to go over well— what the fuck makes you think that that's the only thing wrong with it? That's very true. <laughs> and you know what else? I, you were saying I'm probably you're, you're saying oh I'm probably gonna see it, and I want to say I won't, but damn it, this movie pass! I tell you, it, it's got a hold on me. You say movie pass? Or god or damn it! Stop. See that that that's how that's how negatively I think about it. Maybe a- you can, AMC Stubbs A list. It's got a hold on me, man. Maybe you can do a. 
48 hour, you know, day after day double feature of uh, Sonic the Hedgehog and Fantasy Island. Yeah, I don't know. What if they got Sonic the Hedgehog to be Tattoo and Fantasy Island? What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't fucking know. That that's like I mean, that's a really bad idea, but that's probably a better idea than <laughs> anything they came up with for this Sonic movie. <laughs> oh, Man. Fuck. Okay, so fuck it we're we're just dumbasses you know we you know uh as arthur fleck might say we get what we deserve yeah we when get we go what, yeah. we get what we fucking deserve oh that's right <laughs> so we're gonna see this dumbass sonic movie because we're idiots yeah you don't know fuck that I, i'm gonna try it and do do my best effort to not see it but we all know how that's gonna go <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try and fail, but I'm going to (laughs) try. Moving on to our next story, The King's Man. Not to be confused with Kingsman. (laughs) That's right. King's Man has been pushed back from February to September. The new release date is now set for September 18th, 2020. God damn it. Okay. See, but there's a thing here. February was a relatively crowded month. Yeah. It has Birds of Prey... It has Sonic, as you pointed out, and I think there's a couple other pretty big movies. Mm -hmm. And I think that's partly because February and March have kind of been uh, slowly eaten away at uh, the summer releases, weirdly enough. Mm, Right. This was actually, yeah, it was supposed to come out this year. This was supposed to come out last weekend, as of this recording, the weekend of the 15th at a point. And then it was supposed to come out the 14th of 2020, February. Oh, so it got moved twice. Got moved twice. And that 14th is now, of course, occupied by the two future masterpieces, Sonic and Fantasy Island. And don't forget, Birds of Prey is the week before. Yes. So I'm shocked it got moved this far, but also kind of not. Well, see, but that's what I was just saying. It it seems like summer is just not a cool time for movies. Right. You maybe get a Marvel movie and... One other franchise movie, but I feel like the like <clears throat> the quarter two has become the new quarter, like quarter three. three? I, I don't know what the fuck I'm trying to say. <laughs> well, no, I do. My, my point. Mean. My point is that like June, July, and August don't seem as cool of a time to release movies anymore. Spring and fall, late winter and and uh, and fall are the times mm-hmm. to release things. With the like basically any month except the middle months of summer, January and September, which is kind of making me wonder, oh god, I hope this movie doesn't suck. Cause September has kind of become a It's very weird. September's a a, a volatile month. Yeah, I would have because sometimes this. there's big movies, but then sometimes there's also kind of dumping groundish movies. Yeah, like those weird like B thrillers where you're like, okay, this will tide me over until Oscar season starts yeah, in a yeah. week or whatever. But no, yeah, I expected this to come out and like maybe they pushed it to August, maybe they pushed it to October, which right. would have made a lot of sense considering that October for the past two years has been a hotbed for really big movies. Joker made a billion dollars. Last year, despite us not really liking it that much, Venom made a billion fucking dollars. Not quite, but... Didn't it? Oh, no, eight, 800 plus. 800, almost 900 million Which dollars. Which is outrageous that it made that much. But yes, the point is that October, October proved a hotbed. itself. Mm-hmm. That, that's what I'm saying. October's another month that's taken away from the middle of the year. Right. And November has also been a, a, a part for a lot of Marvel movies to play. You know, you had Thor Ragnarok came out in November, right? Yes. So and I would have expected Eternals there. is coming out this year in November. Right. Uh, yeah, this is a weird move. I wouldn't have expected a September release for this. I, The trailer for this fucking movie, the second trailer, or the new trailer, I don't know if it's the second, came out in front of a movie that yeah, we were I, reviewing, I, and I was like, oh, man, that second trailer actually looked pretty fucking solid. <laughs> right? I, I, I'm like, damn it, and I just learned this thing got delayed. <laughs> Yeah, and, I, I, and then you see, coming to February 14th, like, it's like, uh, no, it's liar. not, you <laughs> son of a bitch. How dare you? Right. But of course, you know, it's not their fault. They got the print. Yeah. And that's that. Uh, yeah, this kind of sucks that we have to wait so long, but I'm sort of okay with it because September was a little on the gaunt side. Right, right. 
All right, so moving on to our next story. Marvel Studios has announced five new release dates for 2022 and 2023. And those dates are, of course, all the films are untitled for these dates, October 7th, 2022, February 17th, 2023, May 5th, 2023, July 28th, 2023, November 3rd, 2023. No, you're not hearing things, folks. That's four movies in 2023. Yeah. So what happened to we're going to you know dial things back? Remember back when we were getting two a year? It was and like, we oh, thought, wow, holy shit, two movies a year, or or even worse, you know, <laughs> you know, maybe fantasies, fantasy island <laughs> is right. Careful what you wish for. Wouldn't it be cool if we got more than? Shut up, just shut up right now. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is, you know, I mean, it's just gonna, we're gonna echo a lot of concerns we already have, which is the oversaturation. No, but of- th- this is like, when's it okay? You've already got four. Now you got four movies a year. Mm-hmm. By that time, who the hell knows how many Disney Plus shows there are going to be? Oh God! How intertwined they're going to be? Mm. And I'm starting to get worried about this whole intertwined narrative thing. And the question it leaves is this: Is it is it basically just going to be a gigantic TV show at that point? Is it going to be like Game of Thrones, where it's just assumed everyone knows it and watches it, and it's like completely serialized? Yeah. I don't know. I, I this is just like a spiraling snowball of of issues I've already had with Marvel over the past year or so. Yeah, concerns that are being brought up and and you know spiraling into a, a full blown news story that we have here, which is that we're just going to be getting even more of these. Look, if the quality's the same or if the quality's good, I'm not going to care. But the problem is, is it feels like they've been spreading themselves too thin as of late. Yeah, it seems that way. I mean, they've got some release dates, so let's see what we got until the untitles. Uh, we got Black Widow and Eternals, so two this year. I guess that's back to normal for a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> but then, do they have three or four next uh, on 2021? Because they got Shang-Chi, Doctor Strange, Thor, Love and Thunder, and then I guess the Spider-Man with Sony. I guess they're not counting for some reason. Well, that's four right there. Hmm. And then Black Panther 2 is 2022. But, like, the ones that are left that I'm hearing are... The ones that are kind of inevitable, that are in development, I'm not really excited about. I really... I don't need to see another Ant-Man movie. Yeah. Doctor Strange, it's like... Eh. Yeah. Are they saying Doctor Strange 3 is one of those? It might be. I'm, I'm assuming it might be. Probably because of the multiverse shit. Yeah, yeah. And that, see, now that that's where you're going to lose me. <laughs> is the second they start really diving into the fake science shit, that's where I say, I'm out. Mm. I was in this for intrigue and some punching. <laughs> and now that there's no intrigue and less fisticuffs, I say, good day, sir. <laughs> you lose. Good day, sir. Yeah, that's right. Um, I don't know. Just, do you... Th- so, do you, what do you think is the right amount a year? I say between two and three. I think where we were going wasn't a bad rate, um, but it was the quality that was starting to dip. That was really starting to. You were starting to feel the amount every year. You know, um, I think four a year is is pushing it, especially if the quality doesn't improve. Well, the other thing is this: how it's going to affect the stories. For instance, Black Widow. I'm excited for it as a Black Widow movie because I like the character and I like the spy stuff. Mm. But there's a part of me that isn't excited as excited because you know partially the direction of the story because of her... Things happening in Endgame. Spoilers. Things happen in Endgame. Fuck (laughs) it. If you haven't seen Avengers Endgame, she dies. Yeah. Whoops, sorry. We we warned you. said spoilers. (laughs) Anyway... But the fact is, we know that's the end of the line. Mm-hmm. But where you're going to lose me is if you do some bullshit. Well, no, we took the soul stone to the genius bar and then they fixed <laughs> it. I'm like, uh, no. The scroll was there and he was really <laughs> Natasha. And the- no, really, the scroll was the cat and the cat <laughs> ate a scroll and then <laughs> it gave birth to a, a new the- Natasha. <laughs> uh, God. No, but I feel like that's. 
that's the only way they're going to not make it as predictable. But in doing that, you're, you know what I mean? You're really reaching to make it on, uh, to less predictable mm-hmm. instead of making a story that feels organic or, or well-written. Yeah, I agree. So I worry about that going forward. Also, you know, we're never going to get a, a, an aut- a remotely auteur esque movie if you're doing four a year. No, it's it can't. Yeah, I mean it. It really can't. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to start confusing people. Yeah, that's true. So this is this is bad news, pretty much. A little bit, especially. Yeah. Uh, it'll be even worse news when we learn. I think what the sto- what the movies are going to be, unless they surprise us and pick some. You know, like the wall. I can't. <laughs> I can't go a podcast episode without mentioning. Oh, okay, that. hold on. There's a couple. Because, well, X-Men or Fantastic Four could be in the conversation. I'll, I'll be, at the very least, intrigued to see how they tackle either of those properties. Okay. I'd be interested in, I don't know, I have a, I have a bad feeling about Fantastic Four. Yeah? I have no idea why. <laughs> just, just, just history repeating itself? You know, that could be it. <laughs> you know, maybe fourth time is not a charm. <laughs> That's right. I'm including the Roger Corman one. Oh, yikes. Um, yeah, I guess besides X-Men and I guess Blade is also in the mix. Other than that, I can't really think of many that sound super exciting. Yeah, me neither. All right. So yeah, Marvel, (laughs) it's happening. Some of it'll be good. Maybe Mm -hmm. we'll find out (laughs) because you know what we're going to have to do? We're going to have to wait Wait and and see. see. Our next story Joker has crossed the billion dollar mark at the box office. It is the first R rated movie to do so, and it did without China. And with the swirling rumors about sequels, one wonders why. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, first of all, there is the Hollywood Reporter, which is usually pretty, I would say, most of the time pretty credible. <clears throat> They're like one of the industry, yeah, like, the big four trades. Yeah. They were saying sequels in the works, and then Deadline said, not so fast, and this meeting never happened, and then Todd Phillips himself said the meeting never happened. He said he's had casual conversation with some of the executives while on uh, press tour for <clears throat> Joker. Yeah, which is very interesting, because the report that The Hollywood Reporter put out was very specific. Right. Like it got very specific. It's like, yeah, they had a, they had a meeting on this day. October 7th, it was like the day after, or the weekend around yeah. or after when Joker made a shit ton of money, and like, Todd Phillips walked into Toby Emmerich's office, Toby Emmerich being the executive for DC Entertainment, or one of the WB Yeah, yeah, one of them. And, um, like, demanded that he have the rights to, like, a bunch of different properties, and Toby Emmerich was like, fuck you, no. And then he's like, I only want, okay, fine, I'll just want, I'll just want this one, and I also want to make a Joker sequel, and Toby Emmerich was like, okay... So allegedly that report was he got the rights to a joke or he he got the green light for a Joker sequel and he also got the rights to another DC character that he's looking to make a Joker spin on. Um so those are very specific like bullet points there. Like so I like So what? That doesn't mean anything. But like usually like they'll they'll say like, "Oh, you know, the sequel is happening. It's like, okay, cool. This was like, yeah, the sequel's happening because this conversation took place and also this, 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 and this, 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 and this are not happening because this, these things were not specifically agreed on, but this is happening. <coughs> Fuck. Well, I mean, it's, it's the same way with all these rumors. You know, things get spread around, game of telephone, and then people right. must hear things. It's just weird that it was the Hollywood Reporter this time. Yeah, that got usually that's a, up in it. That's a we got this covered type fucking thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, where you're <laughs> like, oh, this is that. Like every time I see something from them, I'm like, great. So this is <laughs> so obviously this is bullshit. bullshit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, I I agree, but I I'm also. I don't want to say I'm relieved because a week from now we could be talking about, oh, he actually is doing a sequel. But That's true. I really hope they don't. It's, I feel like it would betray everything that was special about this movie. Right. It's, it's, see, that's kind of the thing is what made this movie work was that it was relatively contained. Mm-hmm. I think making a sequel, you made like you made a big point in this movie. Mm-hmm. or you know, By making this movie, yeah. you made a big point. But then by doing it again, that makes this – it diminishes what the first one did. Yeah. The and whole pr- point I'm, of this movie was to do what Marvel would not do. 
what they were unable and or that a lot to do. of studios won't do. Yeah. But and by making a sequel you're betraying that, I think. Right. So it it didn't ring true for me. Yeah. Even when I heard it, I'm like, what? But it, why? But it made a billion dollars. Back to that. That's amazing. <coughs> That's an amazing feat. Yeah, it's I mean, it's the only R rated movie to do that. I'm just more than ma- Deadpool. I'm just yeah. More than the Matrix. What I'm still just wrapping my head around is the type of movie it was to make a billion dollars. I think a lot of it was word of mouth and press. But even that is like that can carry you to half a billion. Yeah. Fuck billion dollars. I th- I think it, it's made more. It's on pace to beat the Dark Knight. Jesus, that's crazy. <laughs> I think I'm hoping that it sends the message that you can make other types of things. Mm-hmm. That's like like because when it makes a billion dollars, it's really hard to ignore that there is a market for more than you think. Yeah, this could have made three hundred million dollars, and it's like okay, yeah. cool. And even if you look at, I know this is kind of an annoying statistic, but the per screen averages mm-hmm. for Parasite, for example. Mm-hmm. And I know I'm not. I'm. I know you can't just have every Korean movie here, but I'm just saying those types of movies could be made here as well. Right, right. How much money do you think this would? How much more money do you think this would have made had it come out in China? I don't know. I I really couldn't tell. Maybe, Maybe another, another hundred. Yeah, probably another hundred. Yeah. So I don't I don't know if that was really the the I don't really think they were necessarily a key player. No, but if they were like if this movie was like sitting at like eight something, like eight yeah eight, yeah eight hundred and eighty or something, and it we were just waiting on that China release, so it would have been like yeah, China will push us over a billion, but yeah, didn't even we didn't even need that to didn't happen. Didn't even need it. That's insane. This this yeah. whole this for me it's still, you know, and we've seen we've seen a whole bunch of movies this year and not even just regarding the quality of the movie, but when I think back on 2019 and I think about movie the, the movie of that year that just everyone was talking about and it caused it impacted the zeitgeist of that fucking year. Yeah. This fucking how can you not discuss this movie? Yeah. It absolutely was at the tip of everybody's tongue for the whole Jesus month leading up to its release, yeah. even until now. Uh, it's crazy. And I'm very happy for them. Right. And, yeah, as I said, I just want to re- reiterate, I hope this sends the message that you can have... Other shit. Other types of content in your movies. Right. You know, big, happy, crowd-pleasing blockbusters are great. Mm-hmm. But you can also do things with character studies. You can also do things that are more dramatic or whatever. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, less CGI and le- less spectacle-driven. You can do all sorts of things. Yeah, I agree. You know? And I think that's one of the things is it was like a... Said it was kind of like a 70s movie. And a lot of those 70s movies, they're kind of hard to pin down. Yeah. Like, is Taxi Driver an action movie? Not exactly. Is it a crime movie? It's yeah, like it's like... Parts a, it's, of it are. Is it a, a drama? Like, yeah, it's more yeah, than that. You can make things that aren't... You know, aren't so clear cut what they are. Right. You can make things that are a little more nuanced. Agreed. Yeah, so that's that. And now for a really short story Mini Speed Round! The Stargirl series is now set to air each episode on CW the day after they premiere on DC Universe. Basically, I don't have to buy C- uh, DC Universe now. Yay! <laughs> Perfect. Works for me. Also, short story. They're also doing the RoboCop remake. Please let it die. Please let it die. Prequel, sequel, and twinkle gives a fuck. All I know is that it's gonna suck. So that'll do it for the news. And now we move on to the review portion of our podcast where we start off with a review for one of our, or the remaining portion of the year's most anticipated movies for both of us, I would say. I mean, like, sort of, yeah. judging on, you yeah. know, what we like from the director prior. Uh, the Lighthouse, this comes from Robert Eggers, written and directed by him. Uh, he did The Witch, which you really loved. Yes. And I thought it was good. Like, I, I like The Witch. Right. Uh, and then this movie uh, is a... It's The Lighthouse. You've probably seen trailers for it already. It's about a younger lighthouse, or a a younger guy, kind of a loner, played by Robert Pattinson, who does a tour as a lighthouse keeper with an older lighthouse keeper named 
Uh, or not named, played it by Willem matter. Dafoe. Played by Willem Dafoe. It's about two guys who lose their mind. There's no fucking story. This movie sucks ass. <laughs> ah, sorry. Oh. This one just frustrated the hell out of me. That's the problem with this movie is because it's about two guys who are on Lighthouse and they try to maintain their sanity. And in doing so, you really only have one trajectory for the movie. Oh, let me guess. They're going to go crazy and try and kill each other. Mm-hmm. And that's, like, not really even a spoiler. No, it's not. It kind of is signaled in the trailer a bit. And people talked about, oh, man, the themes, it really shows you the isolation and the boredom, man. Yeah, okay, certain things are not interesting to show on screen, like a movie about boredom. What are you going to show a guy just, like, sitting in bed eating Cheetos (laughs) for two hours? Oh, man, it really shows the boredom. I'm just saying... Just because this did a good job of the isolation or whatever, that theme, that's not an interesting theme to explore a lot of times. I think that... Not, not, I'm not saying it can't be interesting. I'm just saying there are tougher sells for things to... There, there are things that are tougher to sell, and this didn't do a good job of so that. So you were not a big fan of this? No, not I, at all. I was more of a fan of this, but still not that big of a fan of it. And here's why. You touched on something there in saying that this movie, thematically speaking, for people did it for them. I don't think anybody can get away with saying what they think this movie's about. Because for me, I don't think this movie is thematically specific enough. I think it's too broad and I think it's too vague. I didn't have there's not enough going on in this for me to care. Or well, for me to care as as much as I as people th- were saying that they were. Right. And see it's funny you mentioned that is there's there aren't a lot of there's maybe like two or three important developments in this sure. entire movie. <laughs> I mean, like it it feels like, like you know. An okay, you know where a regular movie has about fifteen major developments. Mm-hmm. This had about three or four, and there's one particularly. I I think it. I guess it'd be this second act turning point. Sure. Uh it just. It didn't interest me. I'm like, I'm, I've been bored. Why do I care about this now? Mm-hmm. And that's kind of my problem with this movie is there, <clears throat> there, there's so little going on in it, and it just kind of, it just kind of repeats the same beats. Like, oh my god, it's, it's gross. It's mm-hmm. dark. Oh, it sucks being on an island. Being mm-hmm. a lighthouse keeper is no fun. I get it. Oh, what was that? Was that real? Was, was that, that fake? real? Was it fake? I don't know. Oh my god. Can you imagine it? What's yeah. in this drink? <laughs> yeah, it's just like, it's that same shit. And it's weird because this movie, because of that, made me think, re- it, it, it was weird. Generally, a movie this bad, to me, doesn't get me thinking. But this one got me thinking about, what do I look for in a good movie? And I think what I consider a good movie and what I consider a bad movie, it's based on the following things. Is it engaging? Is it entertaining? Is it informational? Is it intriguing? Or is it interesting? I was not engaged because I was bored because they just took too long to get points across. Uh, let's see. It was not entertaining because it, it, it's no fun. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, not that that's always the way it's got to be, but, you know, if it's not entertaining, okay, what else can it be? Can it be informational? Kind of. It was. That's one thing I'll give it, sort of. It seemed pretty accurate to the times, was the 1890s. Oh, yeah. Seemed like that was pretty well done. The accents and the acting, that was fine. Uh, was it intriguing? Not really. I mean, I could see how there's a couple elements in the story about what's the mystery behind the lighthouse? What's going to happen to these? See, what's the mystery behind the lighthouse? That's kind of... Uh, that was kind of intriguing, I guess. But what's the what's going to happen to them? That wasn't intriguing to me because, as I said, really it had one trajectory. This movie kind of felt like the cat's no tell motel joke. You mm-hmm. know how that goes? Yeah, yeah. Where you just tell a really, really long joke, and then it goes across the street, through the hall, blah, 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 and then it gets hit by a car. And then the whole joke is you, you tell this whole long, stupid story about this guy trying to figure out why it's called the Cat's No Tell Motel, and the, the punchline is just... And the moral of the story is look both ways before crossing the street. So mm-hmm. it's kind of just a huge mister, you know, redirect. Right, right. So that's kind of what this felt like in some ways. So that's just kind of my thing is... Was it intriguing? No. Was it interesting? Absolutely not. That's the... the of all the qualifiers I have here, that's one thing it was not... 
So would, that's to me why it wasn't good. Yeah, I would say it. I it's very it's not a movie I would recommend because or it's not a movie I feel comfortable recommending to anybody. There's a lot in this that's very not user friendly. Mainly yeah. because a lot of the stuff you're pointing out I think is very intentional. I think this is an impressionist movie and I think that this is an allegory. I th- I don't think anything in this movie is actually explicitly what it is. Like the mystery yeah. of what the lighthouse is. It's like, yeah, that's a lighthouse, but like what is it actually a- what's this movie actually about? What is this a metaphor for? The puppy represents industry. The puppy represents industry. <laughs> and by the end of the movie, I had an idea of what the puppy represented, but at the end of the day, you I made the lighthouse. The, yeah, no, that's what I meant. <laughs> I meant the puppy in the metaphor. Yeah, the lighthouse is the puppy. Okay. Uh, no, but I, I had an idea of what I thought Robert Eggers was getting at, but at the end of the day, I didn't have an. Ex- I didn't have as much to go off of as, like, say, a parasite, which is also thematically very rich, but more specific in what it's trying to say, and also it says it talks about way more. Th- way more. It talks about many, many more things and it touches upon many more topics and sort of branches of ethic and all that sort of thing. This is just kind of like, I walked out of it like, yeah, I think I know what it's about. And I, that was it. Like I didn't really care otherwise. However, I will say I was very impressed by everything besides the story. Yeah. Like, well, I think it's, technically it's, speaking, this movie is very, very well done. And the acting especially is very good. No. The, okay. The acting is really good and I'll mm-hmm. give it that. But, but he, good acting is not a good movie make. Right, exactly. Good acting can elevate an okay script. Mm-hmm. It can elevate a good script. And obviously, when the script is really good, and then it just kind of they complement each other. You right. know, good script, good acting. But to me, when acting is really, really good, and that seems like it's the only part that's working it's kind of like listening to a song that just sucks. But then there's a really <laughs> rad guitar solo. Mm. Or like listening to a rap song where it's just four horrible rappers and then Andre 3000 just comes in and kills <laughs> it on one verse. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't make the rest of the song any goddamn better. Yeah. The acting, t- I mean, it was it was the acting, but also just the technicality of it. Like this was, you know, you watch a movie that's in black and white and you're like, I feel like this was shot in color and desaturated. Yeah. I didn't get that sense with this. This felt like it was... Like everything was, every set and frame was staged and lit to be in black and white. That's all. I I almost felt like it was like too showy at times. Oh yeah, for sure. But I, I definitely I imagine, felt like I yeah, this should be in black and white. Dweebs arguing on set. No, the the fork has to be on this side. <laughs> just like just set the fucking table, shoot the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? There are certain shots where <clears throat> I I looked at it and I thought. That's not people living in there. That this is someone set this shot up for three and a half hours. Mm-hmm. I get it, that. I I don't know. Normally, I wouldn't complain about that, but it's just like this. It, it felt specifically too showy in this movie. Like I get it. Ooh, good cinematography. I think I, I feel like all you need to do to make a good movie or to make a movie get a good review now is have acting and cinematography. Fuck the script. I think it was more showy when it tried to be what's the word? Surreal. Like then there's some surreal that imagery too. in this and it, yeah. it gets pretty showy for sure. There was a time where I I thought this looks like a goddamn perfume ad. Like <laughs> th- this is so mind-numbingly Weird and not, like, yeah. Mind-numbingly, like, stupid to look at. <laughs> like, I, I thought, like, th- this is what I wasted my time to come to the theater and watch. <laughs> this is horse shit. <laughs> I, I, I might as well just watch Stan Brackett's shit, you know. <laughs> but that's basically... You want to move on to spoilers? Sure. <laughs> All right, this movie in a nutshell. Oh, look, we've got two lighthouse keepers. There's the one young guy. Hi, I'm the young guy from New England, and the old guy. Or I'm the crotchety old captain. I don't like it when the young guy doesn't do work my way. <laughs> don't kill the seagulls. It's bad luck. I don't care. I'm gonna kill as many seagulls and jerk off to as many mermaids as I want. Well, at least get drunk with me first. <laughs> Oh, all right. Oh, by the way, what's up there in that lighthouse? Nothing. Nothing that concerns you. Oh, come on now. You can trust me. I'm a perfectly decent human being. Just ask the guy whose identity I stole. Now you've gone and spilled your beans, Tommy. You're driving me crazy. You're driving me crazy. 
Well, I guess we're both going insane now. Only two things left to do. Roll around in diarrhea water and fight. Well, old man, it looks like I have bested you. What do you have to say for yourself now? <laughs> I swear to God, if you fought one more time, I'm gonna kill you and bury you alive. <laughs> so he kills him and buries him alive. And then, what's in the lighthouse, I wanna know? Nothing. So they both went insane, and then the young guy killed the old guy. Uh, the lighthouse didn't have any cool secrets, or who the fuck cares? The end. <laughs> that was the movie. Yeah, that was. Well, you breached upon a very important topic, which is this might actually be the first time we have to talk about farts. <laughs> so let's talk about <laughs> Okay, I'm not even joking. The first two times, I'm like, am I hearing something? <laughs> I, I thought... <laughs> I thought, am I really hearing this? Oh, fuck. I think I counted about five. Yeah, no, it's a lot, and it's awesome. And in, in a weird way, you're like, you know how, like, in an Adam Sandler movie, a bad one, like a recent one, like, there'll be a fart, and, like, there's a pause for laughter, and it's, like, very pronounced, <laughs> and it's usually, like, one of the four or five farts, like, canned <laughs> fart Foley sound effects that you know by art already? This was none of that. This was, like, what was, what was that? Yeah. Oh, man, it's great. Okay, but onto the spoilers. It was relatively obvious that they were going insane early on. Therefore, the mystery's gone. Like, when he has the first vision of the mermaid, uh, and yes, we've all it answered our age-old question. Mermaids do have genitalia. Yeah. <laughs> wow. What, what a, you know, thank, thanks for answering that question. <laughs> like... It, I'm, I thought, this is stupid. He's clearly crazy. Mm -hmm. So that's whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and then what, what happens? They just sit around, they get drunk, and... They argue about who uh, the cooking. Yeah, and it's <laughs> like they sound like an old married couple. And right. it, you know? Okay, and then on top of that, the, the only development that really mattered... You know, about two thirds of the way. And, oh, you're not Ephraim. You're Tommy. Why'd you spill your beans, Tommy? Who cares? Mm -hmm. Why? Why do I care? I don't like either one of these characters. I'm not interested in anything they're doing. Mm -hmm. If there was some sort of plot, and if there were more characters and more things happening, and they weren't just two guys stuck on a lighthouse, maybe I'd be a little more interested. I, I suppose the point was, oh, now he's not going to get pay because he's going to get reprimanded and written up. Mm -hmm. Because he lied to him or whatever. I think the thing but by is, that point, you'd already bored me to death. As I was watching this, it was very clear to me that, again, that this was not... The movie was... Yes, it's about a dude in a lighthouse and him being overseen by a guy that's older than him that also works in the lighthouse. But, like, I was... It was very clear early on that, like, that's not... Ex, like, that is what the movie's explicitly about, but it's not really what it's actually about. So, the, for me... The plot and the developments of the movie really became ancillary, and it became more of like, all right, what is this a metaphor for, and let me see if I can try and figure out what he's getting at. But again, I'm not a big fan of those kinds of movies, so again, I get a lot of people being like, wow, this is really cool. I think it means this, 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 and this. That's a metaphor for this and this. Like, that's fine. I just, I'm a much, and I know I speak for you as well and saying that, like, we're much bigger fans of, like, explicit, like... No, this is a movie about a guy trying to kill somebody or trying to find a, a whatever. Or the Goonies are trying to find treasure. Right. It's a, the a movie can have deeper meaning, but I, I like movies that do both. You know, I like movies that can bridge the gap between being, you know, allegorical but also tell an explicit story that is interesting. Or I it, got that it yeah. was telling an allegory, but I I with I'm with you in that like yeah the story wasn't interest the explicit story wasn't interesting. That's why I immediately tuned out and was like. All right, what is he trying to say? What's the what is what does the mermaid actually mean? What's this movie actually about? It actually made me kind of rethink The Witch. Like is that movie actually about what it's about or is that an allegory too? But I don't know. That movie had the, the plot of that movie was better than this. Right, the there least. it was more interesting to watch. Mm -hmm. The characters were better. Mm -hmm. They had cooler names. <laughs> Thomason. Thomason and Mercy. <laughs> Mercy and Caleb. <laughs> And all we got was Ephraim and I don't even remember Willem Dafoe's character's name. Thomas. Oh, Thomas. They had the same name. Yeah. Wonder what that means. Whatever. Nothing. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But uh, 
I don't know. It, it's really one of those where you can see it. You'll get something no, out I, of it. I, no, but I mean, I, I don't get, know what it'll be. I'm sure you can find it's all sorts. Rorschach sort of, painting. No, I get that there's all these allegorical meanings, and, you know, there's probably some. There's all this shit about, like. The farts are industry, Alex. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I mean, I get that it, there's the thematic thing about, like, sanity and whatever, and, mm-hmm. like, searching for shit that it's, like, you know, you can't find or whatever. But at the same time. After a while, I just find that shit tedious. Mm-hmm. I think that's probably the thing about what you're saying, implicit, explicit. The implicit shit, even if you can find it or whatever, it's just like, I just, I just don't care enough. See, the better to, example of a movie yeah. that does both is Parasite. And I, I mentioned it earlier. That's a movie where the explicit narrative events are also very compelling. But also, the thematic content is very well developed. And it's overarchingly broad like it it covers a wide swath of things very with it's a very good detail like it's about class issues it's about modern society and humanity it's about modern ethics technology it's about identity and and family dynamic it's it covers so much this it's like this covers probably a million different things if you really want to try hard enough and i'm not really yeah. a big fan of movies that are like that um so I kind of just latched onto my one guess, and that's it. Like I didn't really think about this movie much longer than so you, the ride you, home. <laughs> so your guess is what? What it's actually about? Yeah. What, oh, I already. I, what's I got your a good take? guess. I think this movie is an allegory about the war between uh, the generation between uh, the. I think this movie is an allegory, not even really an allegory, just sort of a retelling of the events going on now between the current generation. Of like we'll call them boomers and the yeah. coming generation of millennials. I think it's just a struggle between like. Yeah, I mean, a, I I got that a little. Like, I got that, that there was like the that difference. doesn't do much for me, you know. Yeah, it's I don't like, care. Okay, that's okay. what my guess is. I'm gonna put it in the ballot box and I'm gonna go home. Even if that. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I feel like, oh, like w- the problem when things are a little too, kind of murky. When they're doing the implicit shit, y- y- you're making it a chore for me to give a shit. Yeah. Was- and then on top of that, the journey to get there wasn't interesting. You know, it's not about the destination. It's about the journey. The journey was not interesting to get to where we left off. Right. And then on top of that, I guess this is, again, this is the explicit horror fan in me. Mm. The second I realized, okay, great. Now all the monsters aren't real. Mm-hmm. So... That element, which I thought was like, oh, so this is kind of weird in the trailer. I thought, well, how's this going to work out? Okay, great. They're all hallucinations. Now you fucking lost me. Mm. There's one thing in movies I absolutely, it's a trope almost. Oh, the the blanks aren't real. Or, the oh, it was just a dream. Anytime where you have something to say, no, 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 no this is less than, that makes me less interested. Yeah. Oh, no, no. This is less than extraordinary. Okay, great. So now I'm stuck with boring people losing their mind. Okay, this is interesting because... Yeah, I was there with you. Yeah. So I really hated this movie. <laughs> A lot. I didn't Despite hate it. Despite the fact that the acting was See, that, super on point and that, that, that it was through. well, for the most part... Well, what I mean, yes, it was well made, I suppose. See, I can take that to the bank at the very least. Like, there are some moments in here where I was like, wow, I'm never going to say, I'm never going to be able to see that again. Like, fucking Willem Dafoe in his weird ass, like, sea shanty, like, old sea crab monologue yeah. about <laughs> fucking well, Poseidon and, sh- and fucking Atlantis and shit. I'm like, all right. That's like, that where, was, see, that's like, where they lost scene. me. I'm, I, this is... I, I, I really don't like monologues that just feel like, like I could just imagine someone just giving this speech on stage, looking at the audience. Well, I li- the only reason I liked it is because it was a joke. Is it's very clear, like at the end, like he's just like, "All right, I like your food," and then it's like yeah. the end of scene. I'm like, "Oh, okay, this we're supposed to think this is over the top and silly." No, I mean I got that some of the stuff was supposed to be funny, and it, I guess it kind of was. Mm-hmm. For some reason, the only part that really made me like, <laughs> I had to like control my. Farts? No, there's oh. one part I had to control myself in the theater because I don't know. I found this particularly funny. Is it the part but, where he's jerking off? No, the, the <laughs> part. For some reason, it just made me laugh my ass off, and I had to like <laughs> hold my mouth, like hands over my mouth, for the next like two minutes of the movie. <laughs> When he just goes to him, he's just like, after he dumped, like, he accidentally j- dumps the chamber pots on himself. 
And then he's like, you smell of shit. <laughs> I don't know why that mi- I f- that just tickled my funny bone. I thought that was hilarious for some reason. <laughs> yeah. You smell of shit. <laughs> I guess it's just like archaic language just to say you smell. Yeah. I mean, it. it I at least got something out of it. I don't super regret watching it, but I am. I was pretty disappointed with it. So I ended up giving it a six, which okay. I know is a oh bit higher God. than I, wow. than you would expect. All right, it, so it, you it gave it a so six. Um, yeah. I'm trying to be more honest with myself when I review things, and you know what? I don't care how well lit it was, or <laughs> or how good the acting was. As a whole, I just thought it was a boring pile of shit, <laughs> borderline art house nonsensical movie. Mm. So I'll give this a one point five. That's a lot higher than five. I thought. I thought you were going to give it a point five or one. A point five, a point five is like I don't even know. That'd have to be ten times more boring <laughs> than the worst Hellraiser sequel. <laughs> oh fuck. Okay. Well, that's at least that, no, that's no, a bad score. I'll give it respect for where it deserves respect, and that's mm-hmm. the cinematography and the acting. Yeah, that's about where I gave it to, and I. But the reason I can't give this any higher is how long is this movie? An hour and forty nine fifty. Ye- yes. This felt like an endeavor. It felt like I was at the theater for four hours. I, <laughs> and you know, the, I I was begging for it to be over. Mm-hmm. Begging. I'm like, oh god! And the, the credits roll. I've said, finally, <laughs> Jesus. Damn, that's no good. That is quite the understatement. Uh, so that brings our grand total to seven point five out of fifteen. So that'll do it for our review of Chamber Pot Backsplash. And now we move on to our second review of the podcast. The movie we're going to be discussing is Ford vs. Ferrari, which is about the 24 hours of Le Mans in 1966 between, you guessed it, Ford and Ferrari. And what a race it was. And what a movie this was. Yeah. This is really, really solid. I really had a great time with this. Uh, I will say this. Um, here's my annoying Gene Shalit headline. Hmm. The film starts out stuck in neutral, but soon after jumps right into third gear. <laughs> yeah, I can get behind that. I have to say this movie did start really slow. And the two movies I saw this week, uh, that weekend before this movie did not have me in a good mood to watch anything <laughs> slow. And I thought, shit, I'm going to see a third bad movie in a row. But luckily that wasn't the case. Mm-hmm. I do think this movie could have been significantly trimmed down. Yeah, there's a lot of setup and it. Uh, it mostly involves just sort of the bureaucratic goings on between why this feud uh, between Ford and Ferrari happened. Um, and I wasn't bo- I wasn't necessarily bored, but I definitely do think that I agree with you in saying that like the stronger bits are like the last three quarters of the movie, really stronger bits. Like the movie, it's one of the only movies I've seen this year where it it's gets proceed it, it gets like better as it goes on, almost like yeah. on a total linear pattern. Like it just gets better and better and better, and it ends on a really brilliant note. It's but that's almost the thing that's sort of frustrating to me is I kind of wish. The last three quarters are so good. Oh yeah, that it it almost makes you wonder why did it need to be this long? Because mm-hmm. it's it's two and a half hours. Yeah, and the fact that the beginning was kind of lackluster in a couple of ways makes you you wonder why they didn't just cut it down a little bit. Right. And I get that there's the beer crack stuff, and not all of that was like super boring, but even still, it's a lot it, of setup. It, there could have been less of it, and you could have gotten the exact same points across. Yeah, I've only seen this movie once, but I'm sure I could go back and watch it again and be like, okay, why didn't you just start the movie here, like 10 minutes in at this yeah. scene, or like maybe 15 right. minutes in at this scene? I, I will say this, though, and this includes a lot of the setup. It did do its best to focus on one event, okay. which is, to me, okay, the thing I, when I say I generally don't, like biopics it's because generally it's just kind of tedious to walk through an entire person's life or Mm -hmm. 10 years of their life or whatever this takes place over what two three years yeah but i think it's mostly necessary to tell the story Mm -hmm. but the crux of it is le mans yes 
So that's what this movie did really well. And I feel like that's what 90s biopics and or, or based on true story movies did better than modern ones. Mm-hmm. It was more focused. Right, by right. Cho- as I said, by choosing to... Pick the most important bits. Yes, pick the most important bits, focus on those. That's what this did well. Yes, I agree. And the other thing I really, really enjoyed too was the approach. I know that one of the things that you had mentioned was like, is this going to be a rah rah like go forward, go America movie? And it really isn't. It's kind of like there's no, more, yeah. There's more to it. There's way more to it. A lot more nuance of like, no, I can see where both of these guys are coming from. I kind of don't like either of them. You're kind of not supposed to root for either Ford or Ferrari. You're kind of more or less focused on these guys, you know, doing the grunt work yeah. and the blue collar work and building these fucking cars that and are going driving to, them and driving them to please these big, powerful people on the respective continents that they come from. Right. It's really, I, I thought it was really solid overall yeah. time. The yeah. acting is really solid. Yeah. We'll, we'll get to the, the specifics of the conflicts in spoilers a little oh, bit yeah. more. I've got some notes on that. Uh, the racing stuff is really good. Holy shit. Good shit, man. Excellent. You know what I think that the best part about the racing stuff was? They did a really good job of depicting the fact that racing is a dangerous endeavor. Yeah. It looks and fun and it looks like someone's just driving. No, this guy is driving a bomb. Like, like a bat out of hell. <laughs> yeah. And could die from one mistake. What I love is that without spoiling anything, there are bits in this movie where like everything seems... You kind of fall into the lull. You get a little bit of highway hypnosis yeah. where you're like, okay, he's driving the car. And then all of a sudden, something will just happen. And yeah. it, everything will spiral out of control. And then all of yeah. a sudden, there's an explosion or something. And you're like, yeah. oh, holy shit. That went down right. really, way too fast. <laughs> well, that that's the thing is they. Re- I feel like they really paid close attention to detail to uh, really do justice of uh, depicting cars in the world of automobiles yeah and just the the fog the bad visibility failing brakes all kinds of problems that happen with cars and that's just compounded by the fact that these things are going 200 miles per hour Mm -hmm. Uh, the special effects i think for the most part looked good however there's a couple cgi shots that i thought like that looks real fake i thought i i I have no idea. There was I, only a couple of them. I thought there was one. James Mangold said there was like only a sparing uh, use of yeah of I mean, CGI, and it was with crowds. I, I didn't know if there was car work or anything. Was there? I thought there was one. It looked like it. I like, thought there was like one, one of the wrecks. Thing. I thought there was one where it was a car. There was one that looked like CGI. It was like from afar. It was like an extreme wide of a car moving up a, a road. Yeah, but I, I couldn't tell if it was or wasn't. But I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, and then I just sound like a dumbass. Well, well it looked fake. It was, I mean, he it's could a be real car. I don't know. It could be could be BS. But I, 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 I was there too. I was like, maybe there was like one or two shots where I'm like, I don't know, yeah. but I guess that's what he was saying. The sound design, though, also in the the racing stuff. Holy shit! It's like that, you know, just like God, visceral, like crunchy. Fucking like oh, it makes you want to be in one of those cars. The gears, the yeah. pedal pressing, and the gripping of the steering wheel, and the, the revvings and the RPMs. Seven thousand RPMs is a big number in this movie. Uh, it's just, right. I think this is a shoe in for sound design and sound mixing Oscars for sure. If that okay. matters to you. Yeah. <laughs> and you you thought the performances were solid oh, overall? Fuck yeah! I thought all the performances for the most part were solid. I felt like some of them were a little over the top, but like I think that's the kind of movie that this is. A little bit. You mean the guy who played Ford was maybe <laughs> Tracy a little... Tracy Letts. <laughs> yeah, but, you know... He cracked me up. For the character he's playing, I think it's kind of appropriate. Yeah, I was like, yeah, this guy's definitely born in, like, 1910. I actually really like the performance out of the the two Ford executives. So, the movie is obviously about Shelby Carroll, who is a former racer. He's the American <clears throat> guy, played by Matt Damon. And then Ken Miles, who's the driver. He's the English guy, played by Christian Bale. And they're kind of at ends or at odds with uh, Lee I Lee Iacocca. Iacocca and Leo Beebe. Leo Beebe, who are the two Ford executives. And I thought Josh Lucas particularly is Leo great. Beebe. Really, really solid performance. <laughs> John Bernthal is Lee Iacocca, right. really good too. Real smooth. Yeah. Um but yeah, I, I agree and I think that for me also the 
a lot of the like supporting supporting cast were really good too. Right. Um, there's a guy Ray McKinnon. He plays like uh, Matt Damon's right hand man. He's got the mustache. He was right. great. Um, I thought Ken Miles' wife, uh, played by Catriona ba- Catriona Balf, was really good. I thought they're fine. I thought the family stuff. I I mean I kind of get why it's necessary for Ken Miles' his character, but. Eh. Some of that stuff, it, it felt a little long-winded. Yeah, yeah, I get that. But uh, Christian Bale, though. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, so, God, this movie's kind of hard to talk about without spoilers. So yes. Let's move on to spoilers. So, the whole Le Mans scene. It's just oh, amazing. Oh, my God. What's so great about it is that it, it's like, you really get the scope of it being, it's like a half-hour scene. Like, it's, like, the whole final, like, 40 minutes of the movie are, like, the half hour of Le Mans and, like, the 10-minute wrap-up. And you really get a scope of, like, this is a day-long race. It's fucking 24 hours. I mean, it's a day. (laughs) I mean, they can't even have one guy drive the whole thing. No, of course not. I also also liked how they have to run to the cars. Yeah, yeah. It's great. You you really got a sense of the geography of that track as well. Yeah, that was another thing is, you know, this seems kind of cliche, but... Doing such a dangerous activity in the beautiful northern France countryside. Yeah, yeah. It's really solid. And and everything leading up until that point is, for the most part, very, very good, too. And the, the scene I was talking about in particular is just when <laughs> they're doing the race on the... Or not the race, the trials on the... I think they're at LAX. Yeah. And then Christian Bale's car, like, just beefs it and blows up. It really gives you the scope of, like, oh, fuck, so... Okay, people can die really fast in, yeah. this, in this this sport. Like, this is by far the most dangerous sport. Like, with immediate death being a fucking consequence that we have. And it's it's insane. You really get a sense of that in this. Right. And, of course, Josh Lucas. <laughs> I, I See, it's hard to talk about his character without spoiling it. Mm-hmm. Or, I guess, yeah, so we're talking spoilers now. So... His role as kind of the Weasley executive was really interesting because, as you said, it's not just a rah-rah, Ford makes the best cars ever. America. Fuck, yeah, Mer- America, fuck goddamn Ferraris. <laughs> this movie is not like that at all because it's really, as you said, the blue-collar workers, Carol Shelby and Ken Miles versus Ford and Ferrari. Mm-hmm. And that was a really interesting interplay because uh, Josh... Lucas was yeah, that's his name. He was Leo Beebe. Yeah, yeah. He he just played the perfect weasel like executive. <laughs> He's such know? a sycophant. Yeah. He wants to please Ford and he wants to be the guy that the, gets the, Lamont for Ford. So he's yeah. like trying to sneak his way in, wedge himself between Well and it's miles. also <clears throat> I think there's a lot of interesting stuff to be said about that because that kind of carries over to a lot of facets in life and it, particularly in, in sports. Oh yeah. You know. Oh, I don't think this is a he's a good image. He's not a company man. Mm-hmm. You know, right? People have these kind of hangups that get in the way of people being hired for their credentials, right? You Agreed. Know. Oh, I don't like Ken Miles. He's hard to work with, but he's the best racer. So, do you want to win or not? That's also the other thing that's really interesting about this movie, especially during the Le Mans scene. You realize that it's almost not about the cars. No, it is kind of, but it's more about the team. The guy is changing the tires because he said, how the hell are they doing this so fast? Because mm-hmm. if if Ferrari were, were to win, you'd have to imagine it's partly because of the crew. Yeah, we were talking about the title of this movie a little bit ago, and I, I think it's an easy shoe in for most deceptive title of the year. Because this isn't a movie about the pride of you know one guy in Detroit and another guy in Modena, Italy. Uh, it's not even really about cars. It's about you know friendship and teamwork and perseverance and like – the ongoing and never-ending battle between like creative thought and commerce, you know, and I, I really dug that, and I really thought that James Mangold in particular brought that out with the visuals, the, um, the technicality of the film, uh, the whole final act is just fucking awesome. Uh, the acting is supremely good. Matt Damon isn't getting yeah. enough credit. He's I really re- the yeah. kind of the protagonist of this movie, and I thought he was real solid. Yeah, I wish I was more of a gearhead because I feel like there's. There's stuff I'm sure for people who are 
more car oriented because I like cars, but I, I'm more of a like a. I think the F40 looks cool. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, is that a Lamborghini? No, oh, that's cool a cool car. That's a '55 Corvette. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, you know, but I'm I'm not a nuts and bolts kind of gearhead. Mm-hmm. But I I feel like just based on the people I know who do like cars, this seemed to be uh, pretty accurate with its terminology and its appreciation of automobiles and their history. Oh yeah. Uh, one other thing that's interesting about this movie. Which, again, I can't say about a lot of based on true story movies. Aside from minor embellishments, most of the major story beats are accurate. Yeah. The three cars thing did happen. Mm -hmm. Ken Miles coming in second place did happen Mm -hmm. because of the technicality. Doesn't that just suck so hard? when That blows ass. Yeah. You're so disappointed for Ken (laughs) Miles Mm because you know that that this is what he's the guy. He's the car whisperer. He was so far ahead. Mm Mm-hmm. God, you know. Yeah, and and the other thing I like too is that look, we're we're talking about a look like it's not as though that you know like this isn't a biopic of like one of like society's modern figures or like an allegorical exploration of like the underpinnings of like today's issues. It's like this is a movie about car racing. <laughs> so, I like, thought it was kind of cool though. It's just like we can have a movie that's just a story. But right. It's an interesting story. And it's worth telling just because of that. And in movies like that, I, like if you want to fudge some of the details, like fine, like nothing's yeah. at stake if you fuck up and like, oh well, this guy actually, you know, oh, he didn't come in first, or like, yeah. oh, this guy didn't have a shitty relationship with this character. It's like, yeah, this is where I'll allow that because it's like again, it's like cheating versus the Super Bowl versus cheating in a game, a game of like Jenga. Yeah, you know, it's like whatever. I don't care if you if you. Fudge a little couple things to make it fit smoother in Ford versus Ferrari. Like, yeah, fine. Okay, for example, like, here are the things that I looked up that weren't true. The locking him in an office, I kind of figured that was... <laughs> Probably an embellishment. Yeah. And apparently some people say the real Leo BB wasn't as much of a snake or whatever. I also heard that the relationship between Ford and Ken Miles wasn't as strained. As it may have been led to, yeah. There, there was the thing, off. you know, the part where he tapes all things to prove drag. Mm-hmm. That apparently never happened. But again, like I, but what, that, what's, but, what's at stake but, there? Okay, <laughs> but the, like the major things did happen. Right. The three cars did happen. Right. Uh, you know, Ken Miles did pass away in an automobile accident while testing the next car. Right. The major things did happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I know this is like so beyond the point, but god damn, did there was there a bunch of beautiful cars in this movie? Hell yeah, dude! <laughs> old cars, beautiful yeah. old cars. Uh, and, well, and frankly, I'm more of a Ferrari man. <laughs> That's okay. The Ferraris look I, good too. I was kind of rooting for them, <laughs> just because those are pretty cars. I guess Enzo Ferrari wasn't even at Le Mans in '66. Even though that bit at the end where he give, he tips his hat to fucking uh, 10 w- miles. Damn it. I wish that was true. I know. I was like, God, that's a good scene. Yeah. But again, like the movie, it doesn't really fuck my opinion of the movie up because like this movie doesn't like change my opinion about society or no. anything other than just like that was a good movie. Like the story yeah. is mostly true. That's all I really care about. And it, I don't know. It's kind of an interesting event. Yeah. There, it's coming it's up. It's a good again. story. It's still going. It's coming up this June. Oh yeah, who's gonna win? I don't know. Probably a European company. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there, there's so much great stuff in the Le Mans sequence too. Mm-hmm. The the Rex oh, break God, down yeah. his door. Oh my God, the door that he just fucking comes up and smashes it with a sledgehammer. No, it was like a shit. rubber mallet, or like a mallet. Yeah. <laughs> Ken's perfect lap. Oh man. There, there was something in that moment where you just you felt like you were really pulling for him. There were a lot of movies that came out this year. That it, 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 I don't know why that seems like it's worth pointing out. Oh no, I, it's like they talk about it throughout the movie, like the perfect lap, the perfect lap. You know, is it yeah. such a thing? Can it happen? Can it happen at Le Mans? No less. I, I think the movie it it's simple. <clears throat> it, 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 it it you know what I mean? It's as you said, it's about perseverance and teamwork, mm-hmm. and you know. It, the movie sphere that we have now, it's uh, there's a lot of loudmouth bullshit. This is just, let's just make a movie about racing. It's very simple. And I, yeah. I would say for me, there have been a lot of movies this year where 
I kind of like some of my favorite movies this year. I've kind of, like in order to recommend them to people, I kind of have to check my opinions of them, not opinions of them, but what I know about them at the door and ask questions like, "Do you want to see Joker? Are you in for kind of a, a not a yeah. downer, but like are you in for a rough ride? Do you want to see Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? Are you in for kind of a slow burn? Parasite? Are you into are you into reading subtitles for 2 hours? This one it's like, I don't really care what I know about you. You'll probably like this. Yeah. This is a very easy movie to like. It's very simple. And by easy, I don't mean like, this isn't like a Marvel or, or Disney picture. I'm not not trying to throw shade at them, like, really. But, like, they make way more consumable films than this. But yeah. You, this is like, this gives you both the art and the commerce, no pun intended, what yeah. this movie's actually about. But it's artful, but it's also just a very, very good story and not yeah. really something that you'll see every year. So I, I would highly recommend it. I would agree with you. It's just it, it just pisses me off that the beginning was so slow, be, mm-hmm. as I said, because the rest of it was so good. So we'll move on to scores. Indeed. Uh, God, I almost... If I were to divide up the acts, mm-hmm. I'd give the last two-thirds of this movie a perfect score. Mm-hmm. And then I'd give the first third of it like a, like a 1.5 or a 2. Oh, damn. Like I, I, I was really not into the beginning, mm-hmm. uh, so I'll just kind of, I don't know if this is exactly the average, but I'll just kind of find it somewhere in the middle, and I, I'm going to give this a seven. It was a perfectly good movie. A seven? Yes. A seven out of five. Wait, oh, <laughs> oh no, I'm using your heretic system. Sorry. <laughs> a three point five out of five. I would give, I'd give this an eight point five out of ten. I really enjoyed it. it yeah. It's just short of of really being really great, but I really, really enjoyed it. And I, I, I thought that I thought that the best scenes in the film that I'm really going to take home are the racing scenes, the scenes between Bale and Damon, and uh, the last few scenes. The the emotional stuff really hit home for me. Right. I'll agree with you on all those fronts. So that'll do it for our review of Matt Damon stealing stopwatches. This next review is for a film that uh, one of our, uh, uh, what do you call it, listeners? Uh, <laughs> acquaintances. Acquaintances, friends. Friends of the podcast. Friends of the podcast. Uh, he wanted us to watch a movie called Geostorm. <laughs> Ned, we're wa- we watched Geostorm. And here's what I got to say, just to start off. Uncle Frank, is this a joke? Ned, something tells me you're goofing us. Some, Wait, some tells me you didn't uh, really think this is a particularly good film, but you uh, maybe pretended you did. <laughs> you thought it was. To be ironical. Yeah. Ned, Ned what, come on, man. What, Ned, what, what are you doing? All right. <laughs> no, but... Uh, so, so shout out to Ned. Shout out to Ned. This movie sucks ass. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, well, man, okay, it's so, so bad. <laughs> It's so bad. And it's not even like a two out of two bombs bad. No. It's just like, it just sucks. It's right. just an honest to God chore to watch. All right, so y- you want to know how I'd sum this up? Hmm. This is one of the worst movies in one of the worst subgenres. Oof, that's a big, <laughs> that's a big old oof. Why are disaster, like, tell me why a disaster movie is good ever. Well, I think Besides some the of magic of the 90s, Twister is an exception. I think <laughs> define good. Like I think some of them are okay. Like does Independence Day count? Absolutely not. There is an alien force there fighting. Okay, but that's not a disaster. Like they blow up the fucking White House. They blow up the what else? Yeah, did they because aliens blew it up. Okay, there's other ones that aren't so bad. It's like, man versus nature. Man versus man. Man versus okay. wild. Man versus beast. Like, so day after tomorrow isn't that bad. It's it's watchable. It's pretty awful. Really. It's pretty not good. Really, I don't think it's that bad. I, I just think it's not. It's not a, a classic. It, it's good like movie, it's like it's a two out of five. It, it's okay. Very not good, but not garbage. Right. I, okay. What, but what other? My, my point is the reason why these movies are usually boring is that without a, a, a thinking antagonist, it's kind of hard to get wrapped up in the conflict. Because Man, it just, you, you know what I mean? It's just. Oh, here's a storm. It's it's just exploding shit, and then people are running away from the explosions. I just this felt like this was like a a, a modern SNL modern SNL because it's not funny, right? Uh, it's like a modern SNL digital short of a Roland Emmerich movie that hasn't come out yet. 
Right. It's like it, it's every big dumb action and, and disaster movie trope that you've ever seen and it's it's played out so shamelessly. <laughs> like I, they might as well have like released this movie with quote along versions. Yeah. But like they had the little animated bouncing ball <laughs> bouncing over every quote and trope and catchphrase and oh, line. Yeah, my, my favorite uh, my minor spoiler. You son of a bitch. Oh my god. I, I, I thought no, you did not just say that. Uh, Cuz I literally <laughs> said someone's going to say that I literally said you son of a bitch about 5 minutes before it happened. I was like someone's going to say that. Man, but, it takes them so yeah. long to fucking find out someone's right. hacking this thing. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> Well, the, I'll, I'll say this, too. The movie accomplished something that very few movies do. I was bored within 10 minutes. Yeah, it was pretty... I, I, I don't I was, know what it was about was the... I was bored di- within about five minutes. <laughs> I don't know what it was about the dialogue, but I was just... It's because it's recycled. It's every bit of dialogue yeah. you've ever heard in one of these things before. It was hard to hear the dialogue. Yeah. It was almost like the actors were just embarrassed to deliver the lines because it's so bad. What's the hook of this movie? It's a fucking court scene. Between Gerard Butler screaming at the dude from Man of Steel in the West Wing, I can't think of his name. Something yeah. Schiff, I can't think of the actor's name. Good actor, but the scene, this, the scene in this disaster movie that's supposed to open all of it out is yeah. a scene of just two people yelling in a courtroom. Right. And they're not even yelling interesting shit. It's just like, I'm good at my job. No, you're not. But well, it's I all- built the place that you're accusing me of being a shitty person at. <laughs> well, you're a you're a poo poo head. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's the exact dialogue. <laughs> No, it's also kind of convoluted. Like, you, you'd you think something this dumb would be a little easier to follow at first, but then they say, I was the leader of the space team in the, the space mission, <laughs> but we want the space team in the space. I'm like, oh, hold on, what's the space team, space mission? What the fuck are you talking about? Also Dutch boy. Yeah. How, how about name. this? <laughs> led by U.S. and China. More like led by the two biggest box office territories in the world. Oh, God, I yeah. Felt so phoned in. Uh, well, I mean, we've already pointed out that the dialogue was terrible. A lot of on-the-nose stuff. I mean, about 80% Come on, of little is. brother. I mean, we need to tell the audience that you're related to me. Don't you remember when this happened and this happened? Come on, you remember that, right? Yeah. Just like you remember this, this, and this, yeah. too? Like, wow. There, there's the one line with Ed, Ed, Ed Harris. How long have you known me? Oh, my like, God. Like, where is this coming from? Yeah. Jesus Christ, so many like, bad, like, like, screenwriting sins. Yeah. Cl- like, pain- characters saying shit they know each yeah. other for. Painfully clumsy exposition. Mm-hmm. Also, just science and physics that <laughs> don't yeah. fucking work. There's a scene in this movie where a character drives a car into another character's car, T bones it essentially. Yeah. And the car, like, it, it, it goes from being skidding across the pavement. To going into a, a roll almost as if it's downhill. Yeah. It's so fucking bad and it looks so fake. The CGI is so bad. I, Holy I'll say fuck. This. I'll say this. The CGI is terrible on Earth, but the CGI in space was, it was okay. was fine. Yeah, yeah. Like, and anytime anything on Earth has to collide with Earth, we're, we got issues. Like a car has to blow up or a car has to get hit by a plane the, or some the, bullshit. You know what it is? The animation is so lifeless. Yeah. It looks like PS1 graphics. Yeah. You know how there's not a lot of give and mm-hmm. impact when things hit into each other in old video games? Mm-hmm. It, it just felt like, doing, doing, doing. Like, the cars felt like they were bound, like, just, you know, like a bouncy ball or something. Yeah, or like, just, whenever there's a tidal wave or a blizzard yeah. coming in, it just looks like a filter going everything, going yeah. over everything, and it doesn't really even look like there's anything happening. No, like... Everything about it looks terrible. The family drama stuff was awful. Oh, yes. First of all, miscast. Um, w- that dude who's supposed to be Gerard Butler's brother, Jim Sturgis. I thought he was his son at the beginning <laughs> of the movie. <laughs> They're still operating under the notion that Gerard Butler might be in his thirties, <laughs> which is like, dude, we've been isn't we've left he, that train. I, I'm not trying to be a jerk, but it, isn't he uh, almost fifty? I think he might. I mean, he has to be. I mean, that's what I thought. I he mean, is fifty. Okay, so yeah, like I don't, I don't know how old the the point is. He looks way younger. Yeah, yeah. I thought he was maybe thirty. Yeah. So I thought there's a major age gap there. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, if I if I had to say anything positive about this movie, uh, 
Zazie Beetz. Yeah, that was weird. I was like, oh, she's okay. in this. Yeah. And she's actually, you know what? I appreciated Trying. her effort with, yeah. with the horrible dialogue she was given. She did a pretty good job. Yeah, she was trying for sure. Yeah. Um. Okay, so, yeah. <laughs> Secret Service lady uh, wearing earrings and three-inch heels. Yeah. Oh, okay, but that... But that's that's small potatoes compared to everything else wrong with this movie. So I'll, I'll just kind of leave that. We're going right to spoilers. I, I yeah, just no, hate this movie. We got to do it so much. Okay, so uh, let's start off. Ed Harris is the bad guy. Wait a minute. No way, dude. The first time he shows up, I'm like, dude. oh, he's in this. Yeah, oh, he's, like, oh this. he's the bad guy. <laughs> yeah, I've seen movies before. <laughs> <laughs> I almost feel like casting him in this role. You know he's the bad guy. You have to. Because he's not even in it at all. I mean... For the whole movie I, until the end. And you're like, yeah, I know where this is going. I could forgive the redirect because it's a common trope and we've just seen too many movies. But using Ed Harris... What a weird cast overall, too. It's just like Gerard Butler, Jim Sturgis, Ed Harris, Dan- Andy Garcia. Is it Daniel Wu? Is Daniel the, Wu is yeah. the whistleblower guy. Yeah. And Zazie Beats. Like, what the fuck is going on with this cast? There's a real who's who. And then Eugenio Derbez. It's like, what the fuck is this cast? Yeah. What is going on? Okay, also, the thing with him flying the satellite off the space station, why the fuck wouldn't his character have thought of that from the get go? Oh, we got to self destruct. All right, before we do, there's definitely a bunch of satellites we can fly off this thing. Instead, he's like, oh, no, I guess we're doomed. Wait a minute. I'm a dumbass and just (laughs) thought of something I should have thought of, I don't know, hours before it happened. Also, doesn't it just feel like, I mentioned this earlier, it takes him like three weeks to figure out that it's been hacked. Like, that would have been the first thing I would have fucking asked. Like, hey, have we checked the firewall? Like, really? It takes them this fucking, or it feels like three weeks. It could be days, but also, my God. why didn't the Indian guy tell someone? Yeah, what the hell's going on? Why did he just go off by himself? I thought he was one of the bad guys. Yeah. <laughs> see, that's what I'm mean. like, this, oh, he's putting a bug on the fucking, th- see, no. That's what made this movie, it was just so poorly unclear. made. Yeah, it, it was really not clear. Mm. Yes. And there, 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 there were scenes I had to watch. I had to watch certain scenes over three times because I was just so bored. I was was not listening. <laughs> I don't know why, but for some reason, the dialogue, it was just, I can't explain how bad it was. You're stronger than me. See, I just let the boredom flow through me like rain, and I yeah. I, I would, I wanted I would to, fade in and out and be like, what? <laughs> What's happening now? I, I uh, wanted to scene. try and understand, but I, I think the problem with the, well, I guess the dialogue, it was just, it, it's not on you. No, I, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's not like, your fault. No, I know. <laughs> it's just, I feel like it kind of ebbed and flowed between trying to be extremely specific. And trying to be really... Really vague. Yeah. Yeah. So then it'd be like, hey man, what's up? Stuff, I don't know. Remember the trifissolate code to unlock the key to the... That? Yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, what's up, bro? It's like, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> Who wrote? Why are we going from super scientific stuff to family shit back to scientific stuff to family? It was God. The movie doesn't even really have anything going on in it. Like yeah. the the real action sequences, like even the day after tomorrow or like 2012, have like car chase scenes and like scenes where they gotta climb through like a fucking you know flooded area or a snowy area or whatever. Like action treachery yeah. and like all this shit. But like this is like all right, we're going to be on the spaceship for a little bit. Okay, now another shitty disaster happens where people yeah, get killed. Yeah, it's like I, now I, we're I, back in the courtrooms and we're in Washington. Another shitty disaster. And like there's a car chase at the end that's not very good, but it's like the best scene in the movie. And yeah. by that I mean like it's not very good <laughs> and the CGI sucks. It, it's Compared to the rest of the movie, you're like, at least something is happening. Yeah, this is an action scene, so Jesus. Right. But, yeah, beyond that, okay. wow. So when the Secret Service lady decides to cause a stir, you know, to get everyone out of there, uh, there's about five people next to her and 10,000 people, <laughs> like, in the arena. Not one person there. Oh, yeah, she definitely started all of this. 
when she shoots the gun randomly and they're shots fired. Two guys, a lot of maps. Shut up. If you like, if you ever don't, don't Oh my god. If you ever go back don't, and watch yeah. this, that scene where Daniel Wu gets hit by the fucking car, you gotta watch the reaction. So it it goes like this. They're walking up. It's re- it's them looking at Daniel Wu walking up. Uh, the main dude, the brother, and the yeah. uh, Secret Service lady. Then they cut to Daniel Wu crossing the street. He gets hit by the car. Then they cut back to the two other people. And Jim Sturgis, the brother, is like, oh, fuck. And he runs over. And But if you look at the Secret Service lady, she just, like, pulls out her yeah, phone. Yeah, I thought she was a bad guy. Yeah, like, she looks like she's just like, oh. Gonna call uh, the I, bad guys I, I to thought, come in and pick up the yeah. body. I was like, "Oh, she's in on it." And but no, it's just like really wooden acting. Like she's supposed to be react, and like she's on the phone. Like we need an ambulance here. I'm like, "That's your we need an ambulance." I'm gonna pull out my fucking phone to call an ambulance. Look, come on, man. Like, I, we, why did you sign on to this movie? <laughs> Also, what's up with the little brother always looking like he's and sounding like he's he's about to cry? <laughs> Like, get a hold of yourself, dude. Oh, man. Jim Sturgis. Man. He was once on top of this sort of world. He was in 21. Yeah. In that fucking movie. <laughs> yeah. So, the self-driving car. Uh, gee, I wonder who won't be in it when, when it <laughs> arrives at, at yeah. the bad guys. Nice plant and payoff. Also yeah. love the scene where Ed Harris, just, it's like cut to like, we're going to wait for him here. Pulls yeah. out the fucking rocket launcher. I'm like, yeah, I was oh, gonna this say, is real intricately planned. Yeah, I was going <laughs> <laughs> to this, this, this is very delicate, guys. intricate plan. Guys, the ballistics of an RPG and the damage from natural disasters are practically identical. Nothing's going to go wrong. There's going to be no investigation. Yeah, there's not going to be any shells or evidence or anything. No, dude, it's, it's going to work out perfectly. This is like a nine-year-old wrote a movie. And I don't say that. Like, people say that all the time. Like, it's like a nine-year-old wrote this. It's like, no. There are points in this movie where it's like, yeah. no, dude, that's not how weather works. Like, it'd be yeah. like if I was explaining to my son or my daughter, like, yeah. no, bro, that's not how weather works or physics that was or almost my, That was almost what. a problem, too, is there are certain times where, okay, for instance, the beginning, we figured out a way to stop the storms. How? <laughs> Just like shooting little pills in the ocean? Yeah, you shoot, like... Like, they didn't even really show that. Like, they, they didn't ever talk about it. Like, they have, like, lasers. And, like, they had the yeah, one like, laser okay, going on. Okay, does it make a grid? Or? Yeah, like, what the hell's going on? It was, like, a cake, like a big bubble covering the earth. And, like, they had this laser shooting down at the Kremlin, but all it did was, like, turn the fucking... <laughs> it just, like, set fire to the one church. And then fucking... <laughs> just, like, what is going on with this shit? Uh, oh, my word. You know who, who's the real star of the movie? Mm. The the Indian kid's dog, <laughs> <laughs> right? That's like, uh, how bad is a movie where that's the only character I care about? <laughs> like when the disasters were happening in Rio, I thought I don't know any of these characters. This is boring. <laughs> and then when the laser beams tearing, I, I don't know any of these people. And Orlando's on fire. I don't care. But the scrappy little dog. I said no, oh, not the doggy. <laughs> oh God. I mean, I think it's pretty needless to say that we both would give this identical scores. I mean, it's this is this is like unless a, we gave it. This is a clear one out of five. I there, gave, there's nothing redeemable about this movie. I gave it a three. Oh, oh, right, it's not a, a three, three out of yeah, yeah, three out of my heretic score, yeah. three out of ten, which is so, so probably where, the lowest thing I've. given Where's in the a extra while. point five come in? Uh, I think the stuff you talked about, like there's some. Like, I, I didn't mind Ed Harris seeing him in here, like, kind of playing the snarling bad guy. It's oh always God. fun. But even then, he's not in it much. Zazy Beats is fine. Uh, some of it's funny bad, like, especially at the end. Like, it gets really, like, just ridiculous and dumb. But it wasn't enough, so I got to I gotta put it down. Yeah. I got to put it down hard. Yeah. Can, three out of ten. Yeah, three out of ten. That's a, uh, so that's a grand total of <laughs> four, and four and a half out of out of four. Four and a half out of... Wait, no. No, you, I gave it one. Oh, yeah. No, you're right. Four out of 15. Four out of 15. Congratulations, Ned. We, <laughs> we will never take one of your... <laughs> you we'll, got us. Well, yeah, you got us. We'll never you, take one of your requests. You done goofed us. Ever again. <laughs> so that'll do it for our review of Armageddon, but shittier. <laughs> And now it's time for some album reviews. Uh, I didn't get around to listening to a new album, so we'll just do one old one. All right. Sure. 
Uh, I'm going to go with the soundtrack, as you often do. I'm going to go with Lalo Schifrin's soundtrack for Cool Hand Luke. Mm, nice one. Really good stuff. I love the guitar theme for the main theme, particularly. Mm-hmm. The Egg Eating Contest is another good <laughs> track. Mm-hmm. It's just it's solid. It's a, It's like an interesting mix of styles, too. Yeah, yeah, no, I got it. Kind of folksy, plus a little, uh, a, a tiny flair of flamenco. I got to get around to watching that one. It's a good movie and a great soundtrack. I love Lalo, man. I love me some, you know, Mission Impossible and Rush Hour and, of course, Enter the Dragon. Right. I mean, the man is obviously one of the best musicians of all time. Oh, hell yeah. <clears throat> uh, well, I also did a soundtrack as far as old soundtracks are con- or old albums are concerned. Um, okay. Thomas Newman's The Green Mile. Okay. One of my favorite movies of all time. Also one of my favorite soundtracks of all time. It's got a lot of different stuff going on, just like the movie does. Well, I got to be honest with you, I haven't seen it. I know. I, I know, it's crazy talk. You got to get around to it, just like I got to get, get, gotta get around to see Cool Hand Luke. Thomas Newman's got some pretty uh, iconic stuff. Shawshank, American Beauty. Is he the one who did Mighty Ducks and all the sports movies? That might be a that might be his brother, or I don't know, because there are a couple Newmans. There's obviously Randy Newman. There's Thomas Newman. Thomas Newman. And then, there's um, there's a well, there's a uh, Alfred Newman. I think it was the dad. There's a lot of them. There's a lot okay. of musical Newmans. So yeah, so it's a good one, huh? Oh yeah, definitely. Green Mile. I'll have to check that. Well, I should see the movie too. Definitely. All right. So that'll do it for the show. Uh, Thank you for listening to Bonus Features, episode 58. I'm Alex. And I'm Robert. Uh, So you can find us on all our social media. You can uh, drop us a line on Facebook or on YouTube. And then you can listen to us on YouTube. (laughs) And then you can click on our links on Facebook. (laughs) But seriously, you can find us also on Shout Engine, Spotify, iTunes. And Twitter. Oh, yeah. And Twitter. (laughs) Woohoo. Okay, so that'll do it. See you guys next time.